Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin and today's topic is besting our bullies. We, most of us anyway, have a voice in our heads that is telling us or has told us that we're not good enough, given us messages that uh, we shouldn't even try to do certain things, uh, that will never amount to anything. There's all kinds of messages that this inner bully might be delivering. I'm calling it an inner bully. And um, what we get to look at different ways to deal with bullies and to best this, this bully, this internal dialogue. But before we get started, uh, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your notes and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, and bring, creating this brilliant beam of light from, and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together, feel the pressure, the temperature, the sensation, and all that tickling and tingling that happens when you stop, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Roslyn. Good morning. It's great to have you here with us this morning. Welcome to everybody else who's joining us. Um, I, don't, I don't think I know anybody who hasn't at least at one time had this voice in their head that tells them all kind, gives them all kinds of really negative messaging. And um, I call this voice the bully. Uh, but the thing is, there are a bunch of different ways to approach this voice. And some people experience it not just as a voice, but as an embodiment. So it might, if for one client, um, this voice is a big, he heavy, big, angry man who just gets in his white face and screams. And, um, you know, other people have this disembodied messaging that's happening, like a broadcast station that's always on. And um, the thing is that we often don't even notice it. And this came up yesterday. We did a, um, a session on, on, uh, besting your bully, essentially. And it was fascinating because one of the people said, I thought it was just me, you know, um, and what they got to recognize was that they, from morning to night, starting first thing in the morning, they were giving themselves, or this voice was giving themselves all kinds of hateful messaging, hateful, judgmental, negative messaging and when they when they started realizing that that's not like when they started listening to this messaging and actually saying you know what just because that's there doesn't mean it's true i don't have to be listening to that it's just this narrative that's going all the time that was a revelation to say, well, wait a second, what, what is all that about? And we know that we are taught how to treat ourselves and how to treat others, we're taught. 
And whether it's within the context of our family directly, which is generally the, the largest influence, whether it's through media, whether it's through other people that we interact with when we're in school or at work, uh, we are taught to treat ourselves and treat other people the ways that we treat them. And this voice, this voice is a cultivated voice. So first, one of the most powerful things, obviously, is to recognize it, to hear it, and to recognize that just because it's saying all this stuff doesn't mean it's true. And it doesn't mean that it even has wisdom. So this is this is really, really fun, actually. I have um, I was doing an exercise with a client and we were at, there's a, a an NLP technique that's called a parts party where, you know, you have this part that's really serious. You have this part that's really playful. You have this, you know, all these different parts. So we decided to do this parts exercise. And um, one of the parts was a Scotsman. And I've known about the Scotsman for a long time because he seems to be the one that has the bullhorn. You know, he seems to be the one that's driving the show in this particular person's life. And he's he's just a, a negative um, downer. You know, like he's he's the guy that when things are going good, he says, just wait, it's going to turn around or you're going to pay for this later. You know, have fun now, pay for it later. He's the one that says, um, if this wonderful thing happens, you know, the, all, you're going to have all this suffering associated with it. And he just has been driving the show for years and years and years. And so what was really fun, good morning, good morning, Gia, good evening to you. It's wonderful to have you joining us. We're talking about besting your bully, the inner bully that um, torments us and, and tells us we can't accomplish or that we're not worth anything or who knows all kinds of awful things that it tells us all the time. And um, we get the choice to not listen to it and to in a, interact with it in different ways or to overcome it or potentially to heal it. So anyway, you know, we recognize in NLP that, um, and that stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, if you're not familiar, uh, it's essentially a study of, of how we create our internal experiences, you know, how things are are wired together and it, it it is one of the foundations of the core connection work that I do. And um Roslyn says our whispers are repetitive and sometimes are over loudspeakers, but yes, creating space for those uncomfortable feelings and unpleasant thoughts to actually feel it rather than repairing or to get rid of it. Exactly. Well, well, um tapping helps for sure, but first recognizing this thing right so anyway this this person has a scotsman as one of the characters that's kind of driving their life and in this conversation we they were all on a bus ride all these parts and it was very fun and the scotsman just seems to get the bullhorn most of the time and so in our session um my client actually found a cartoon character from the Bugs Bunny cartoons of a Scotsman. And it was comical. It was comical. And, you know, there's this grumpy character and it was funny. And he, I actually had him print out a picture so that he could put that where he's working so that if he gets in the harumphus grumpus Menta mentality of the Scotsman, he, he's right there to look at and put him in his place to laugh and, and to recognize what's the Scotsman trying to do. Like, let's think about it in this particular situation. 
what is so this is also an nlp thing what's the positive intention of the negative behavior the assumption is that all behaviors have a positive intention and so the scotsman's positive intention was is was is to um protect him from disappointment and to um, to in a certain respect keep him humble, but mostly mostly to protect him from disappointment. So, or from getting too excited about something, you know, because if he got too excited, then there's an opportunity for a crash on the other side. Right. So initially, the Scotsman was a protector. We might think about that. Here he is in his kilt and he's got his bagpipes and, you know, he's kind of a warrior protector. But ultimately, what he ended up being was somebody who puts a damper on every moment of joy that could be and every moment of vitality and enthusiasm he just sort of clamps it down shuts it down and so to be able to put this part this bully in his place in this particular and and when i say put him in his place it's like in the hierarchy of listening because there are all these other parts to listen to too but the the scotsman in this case had the bullhorn so the creating the cartoon and being able to laugh at that part and not take it so seriously is a really powerful way to um to diffuse the impact that the scotsman had right because the the scotsman was really just keeping this person who's got an incredible life miserable it keeps it keeps from the enjoyment of life and so i invite you to notice the different parts and and the the voices that are kind of running the show that may be less than inspiring voices <laughs> you know, that may be bullies. You know, I I used to have, it's funny because I'm not really present to it very much anymore. On occasion, I have myself questioning myself, but it's very different from the part that used to tell me essentially that I was worthless, that I was worthless, that I I should be ashamed of myself. Some of us have that voice that says, you should be ashamed of yourself or you should have done this or you should have done that. Good morning, good morning. Jenny, congratulations, that's so awesome. Jenny says, I just signed up to do two different meetup group events. Yay, Jenny, good for you to take positive action. I'm so proud of you, that is wonderful. Good for you. Um, and so, we do have the ability to um to transform things taking action positive action to uh, um toward the things that you desire i'm so pleased for you that's awesome so we're talking about besting the bully the internal bully the the voice that's telling us that we're worthless that will never amount to anything don't even bother trying or uh, just wait, the other shoe's going to drop or um, all kinds of horrible, horrible messaging that we get. Oh, Jenny says that the meetups were about a connect about connection with self and others. Beautiful. Well, may it may they be rich with wonderful connections. And if they're not, try other ones. Jenny says, I know that voice. Yeah, so I, you know, so here's the thing. Everybody thinks that their voice, that nobody else has the voice. Everybody's got the voice. We've all got the voice, we, you know, and we've got it to different degrees. I'm very grateful to know that 
you know, what my voice isn't, it, it's not as prominent as it used to be by any stretch of the imagination. It shows up every now and then. But um, so there are other ways that we can best this bully. So another thing to recognize is that bullies typically have been bullied. You know, bullies are wounded people or voices. And uh, if there's a part of us that has that bully voice, then we get to, this is, I'm going to give a bunch of different approaches and you get to see what works best for you. But in this conversation yesterday, um, one, one person was saying that they work with children and a lot of bullies and and uh, their stand is there is no such thing as a bully. You know, there's there's woundedness, there's bully behavior. And I like that, that there's bully behavior rather than there's a bully. But um, and that their best, their best approach to their inner bully is kindness and curiosity. So looking at that, that if it were the Scotsman to say, where did that come from? What was the wound that created the Scotsman? And um, maybe being able to go in and with kindness and compassion, heal that wound. So give the Scotsman some love and appreciation to say, hey, you know, I really appreciate your, your um, commitment to me. I really appreciate your persistence and I want you to know I've got this I've got it handled and maybe there's another way if you're looking to protect me from from uh disappointment that you can use your your wisdom uh and vigilance to share with me in a more productive way you know so we could have a conversation with the bully and see if that works, and it might. So Rosalind says you can spend the rest of EFT. E EFT can help making it safe to feel these uncomfortable thoughts. EFT is emotional freedom technique and it's the tapping technique, really, really powerful, super powerful tapping on meridians. Go check out um, the tappingsolution.com or do a, a web search for EFT tapping and you'll find all kinds of great resources. So um, Roslyn continues, if there's pain in the body, asking self rather than what do you need me to do? What are you protecting me from? Become curious. As a result, some of it or all of it will dissipate 100%. Beautiful. I love it, Roslyn. It's really, really true that um, oftentimes the experiences of discomfort and pain in our body are communications from us. And so it, instead of what do you need me to do, you could ask, what are you protecting me from? You could also say, what are you trying to have me understand? You know, so oftentimes we will get messages from our body and being that say, chill out, you know, take a rest, take a break, take a break, take a break. And what happens is if we don't take a break, we get a break. Whether we get sick or we injure ourselves or something, our body finally says, okay, you don't listen, I'm going to just enforce this. So we get to listen to that. Rosalind says one can spend the rest of their lives trying to bridge the gap. Well, hopefully at least we're always learning, right? Otherwise, what I say, if I stop learning, I'm dying. And um, all of life is an evolution. It's not a place that we ever arrive, right? So Gia says, I had this bully all my life. Thank God I'm learning to still move in the direction I want to and not busy anymore trying to console, pacify, comfort, or fix that voice. But it seemed terrifying to keep t fighting it 24-7. Finally, I've learned to let it be. I treat it like a guardian trying to protect me all, all, all the time, but in a way that's painful. 
I got it. I, you know, Gia, I hear you a hundred percent. And, and uh, we have given the bully too much of the bullhorn is what I think. And so one of the techniques to work with the bully in this case is to turn down the volume, literally turn down the volume or put a goofy soundtrack behind it or give it a cartoon goofy voice so that you can keep whatever it's saying in the perspective. You know, maybe you can have a conversation and say, hey, listen, here's the deal. If you want to speak with me productively and provide me with, with, um, with wisdom and caution, cool. If you just want to keep doing this, you're out. You know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna keep doing this over and over again. And I had another client whose bully showed up as this big angry man hollering in his face and he hit him with a baseball bat and the bully went away. You know, sometimes you have to holler back. Um, and, and the thing is that they're all different ways. Maybe, you know, the way we were talking about it is that there, if there's an emergency and you're being abused, and this is a form of abuse, whether it's self-abuse or, you know, bully abuse in your own brain, uh, you get to stop that from happening. And then maybe after that, there's room for reconciliation. So Gia says, uh, Jenny says, be determined to do what that voice is holding you back from trying something new or unknown experience. And exactly, Jenny. So the thing is, the voice is not the arbiter of your experience in future unless we let it be. And that's the thing is most of us hearing that voice, we think it's an authority. We think it's true what the voice is saying instead of saying you know what you are just you are just an instigator you are you are just torturing me or trying to torture me or overcome me with these lies i know these things aren't true and then listen there are other voices it's just that somehow somehow the bully gets the bullhorn and we get to take the bullhorn away it's like, okay, you're done. Or thanks for sharing next. You know, there are people that just go on and on and on. That just because someone's talking doesn't mean you're obligated to listen. So just because the bully's talking doesn't mean you're obligated to listen. We, we tend to listen out of politeness or fear or intimidation, but you're not obligated to listen. And you're certainly not obligated to follow the, the instructions or the, um, the negativity that is being spread to you. So Gia says, self-inquiry has helped me to listen to it and still be with it without having it push or fight or without having to indulge it just be with it in so many different ways. And I'm still discovering new ways. Exactly. So the thing is, if we recognize it, then we can recognize that we have choice about it. If we don't recognize it, if we don't hear it, if it or if we believe that it's true, if we just assume that it's true, then we give it power. And we can disempower that voice. You know, we can let it go on and on and on and just say, you know, we could do, no, 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 I'm not listening. <laughs> you know, we could do music that overpowers it, that's empowering music. We could manufacture all these different ways of dealing with it in our heads. We could deal with it with kindness and say, I'm so sorry, you're so wounded. Um, that you believe that that's how life should be. Um, we could go after it with a baseball bat. We could do any number of different things um, and, and see what works. I don't do the baseball bat thing first. I do do kindness, but I remember I 
had someone in my life that was bullying the heck out of me relentlessly, relentlessly. And I was trying to be kind. I was trying to turn the other cheek and nothing stopped the bullying until finally I just got in their face and, and screamed and said, I'm not going to have this anymore. You know, this is, I'm done. And I screamed and just hit back, essentially. I was getting pummeled all the time, not physically. And finally, I hit back, and that's when it stopped. So that's where the baseball bat idea comes in. You know, when somebody's bludgeoning you, even your own voice, then sometimes that's an effective way to make it stop, is to fight back. So um, Gia, uh, let's see, uh, Gia says, no, Jenny says, yes, often the voice hides unconsciously. Mine did when I was a kid, right? We don't know, we don't know different when we're kids. We're, we're just, we internalize the messaging that we have from the external environment. And I noticed that when I got to college, you know, I'd been fighting against um, my my family and the influences and the negativity. And then I found when I went to college, there it was right in me. I was beating myself up as as badly or worse than I had been beaten up emotionally growing up, you know? So um, Gia says, thank you, Mira Rubin. I'm going to come back to this episode again and again for tools that you shared. You can have um, you can have one day only on sharing tools. Thank you, Gia. You know what? I have so many tools. And so I try to um, share them bit by bit. And uh, I think I think having a toolbox is really, really handy. Being able to have a versatility of ways to respond is a very useful thing. Being able to use our righteous rage, which is what I'm talking about in confronting the bully which is what finally happened for me because I I don't want I was a fighter all the time so Jenny I see fight 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 uh, Jenny says rule the mind not the mind rule you and that's just it realize it's just one aspect of the mind but I I was a fighter I was fighting all the time uh not physically and it's exhausting to fight all the time. So when somebody was bullying me, I didn't want to be fighting. I didn't want to be, I, I just didn't want to be engaging on that level, but they were relentless. And so I mustered that part of me that was the fighter that was going to go for the eyes. You know, like if I, if you, get me to the point where I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight to hurt. I'm going to fight to win. And um, I don't like getting to that point, but you don't want to get in, you don't want to get me to that point because then all rules go out the window. And that's what happened finally is just, I turned around and I said, no more of this. This is just not happening. And it was so funny because that person said to me, why are you being so mean? <laughs> you know, like they'd never seen that part of me uh, because I hadn't had to muster it, but I nothing else worked. And so I don't want to be fighting all the time and I don't want anybody to have to be fighting all the time. It's exhausting and it cr fighting creates fights in many cases. You know, sometimes with a bully, you just need to beat them up once and then it's done because they know they can't bully you anymore. And I'm not talking about physically. So by the way, it was a metaphorical baseball bat um, in the example that I gave. So um, Jenny says, me too, all my life since I was three years old, being bullied, I'm gathering and uh, I can relate with you. Yeah, well, so... So we, we are our worst bullies. That's the thing. 
that's the thing because we've internalized this nastiness that we've had in our experience and then we continue to do it to ourselves and so there we once you get the bully to stop then maybe you can go heal it you know maybe you can try you try kindness try compassion try love and then if you have to still try confrontation um you know whatever whatever it takes and um hopefully hopefully it'll be something that you can you can do through kindness compa and compassion and love so rosson says helps to realize we're not at the effect of time from perspective that that life already uh, from perspective that life already lived, have access to hope, clarity, and calmness by imagining future self has already worked it out, seeing us on the other side of it, being a witness to see it unfold. So, Rosalind, it's interesting you're talking about another NLP technique that's timeline therapy, saying really we can go into the past, we can go into the future, we can live into that evolved future and gain wisdom from that future self that has wisdom we can go back and heal the wounded child from the past and so truly we are timeless and that's another another tool is to look at well where did that wounding occur and maybe go back and heal it before it happened so that it doesn't have to have affected our entire lives and can free us in this moment. Um, I know that might sound bizarro because we're used to the notion of linear time, but we really do have the ability to, to, do, to heal the past and the future. And um, I have seen it over and over in my clients. So Jenny says, squash it, release and let it go. I'm working on it. Awesome. And again, congratulations for taking action to move into the, um, a situation where hopefully it will be conducive to cultivating relationship and, and uh, filling that hum very human need for connection. So good for you. And that's it for this morning. So uh, I do encourage you to best that inner bully and um, to look for, look at what is, to keep experimenting with strategies until you get the result that you're looking for. So Jenny says, thanks, I'll let you know how it goes. And until next time, I'm Mira Rubin, this is The Core Connection. I go live here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I encourage you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, Enlightened World Living, and EWN, One with the Earth. And I thank you so much for your, your courage, your candor, and your, your authenticity. And until next time, so much love. <laughs>